a lab that we, or that I came up with, called Evolution with Teddy Graham. So this is how we came up with it. One time, it was after school when I was in Massachusetts, uh, recently engaged to my current wife, and Hungry went over to her place, and she had a niece, and she had these Teddy Grahams. You know, the, the, they're like cookies. She had the honey Teddy Grahams, which are quite tasty. And I put them on, I spread them on the table, and I started eating them because I was really hungry. And I realized there are two Teddy Grahams, two. Ones with their hands up, and then ones with their hands down. So then I started becoming a bear-eating monster. I said, okay, I'm only going to eat the happy bears, and I assigned the ones with their heads up as happy, and they have a hard time running through the woods and getting caught on branches and stuff. And then the sad ones are a little kind of bitter, and their hands are down low, and they can easily escape. So then I would only eat the happy ones, and I assigned the happy ones a genotype, and then I started separating them out and calculating their gene frequencies over a period of time. And that's how we actually came up with this lab, eating Teddy Grahams. Now, I used to go out and buy boxes of Teddy Grahams for my class, and then I realized that these things are like five bucks a box. And in order for really to do it, if you're talking about five boxes a class, that's $25 a class, and that was just way too much. So we came up with the um, happy and sad bears, the paper bears, right? which are not nearly as fun as the real life cookies. But I apologize. So if you want to go have some Teddy Grahams, by all means go eat some Teddy Grahams, but please don't eat these Teddy Grahams. They're paper. So that's what we're going to use today. Now the lab was pretty straightforward, but then I decided that we're going to try to do some Hardy Weinberg with it, and we're going to graph and see gene frequency changes. And in order to do the Hardy-Weinberg as well as the chi-square test with, you know, data analysis and figuring out standard deviation and all that sort of stuff, we need to come up with a new lab. So I've been thinking for the last couple of weeks of a new lab. And I know you're excited about this. So we can get started on it right away. So now, what we need is a starting population of bears. Generation zero, as it were, right? And we need to be able to, everyone should have the same population of bears. And I was thinking, what can we do to have the same population of bears and for P and Q to be the same frequency? Because we're looking at a change of gene frequency over time. Specifically, we want to take a look at and see if we can see a change in P and Q or maybe even the different genotypes. So, how can everyone, and I mean everyone for generation zero, have the same, the same uh, population as well as I want the P and Q to be the same. So I came up with the fact that we're, everyone's going to start off with 15 bears. Now, we have to figure out which bear is happy, I mean which is which trait is ha uh, recessive, which trait is dominant. So we're going to say that happy bears are recessive. So we're going to put that over here. I'll put that over my shoulder here. Little a, little a equals a happy bear. Okay, we have to know that right off the top, right? Now that means that if you're a sad bear, you can either be big A, big A, or big A, little a, correct? But in our population, we're going to start off with all of our bears being heterozygous. All of them. That means that the frequency of P would be 0.5, and the frequency of Q would be 0.5, because half of the alleles are dominant, and half the alleles are recessive. Yes? Got that? All right, so what I want you to do is to pull out from your box, your bag, your bowl of bears, 15 sad bears. Pull 15 sad bears out. Let's count them. 15 sad bears. Pull them out. We'll do the lab first, and then we'll do all the calculations later. 15 sad bears. So if I have 15 sad bears, my P is equal to 0.5, and my Q is equal to 0.5. Can we all agree on that? 
because I'm saying that those sad bears are going to be heterozygous. Yeah? Anybody have any questions yet? Are we good? All right. So, in our first, we need now, if natural selection doesn't change gene frequency over a period of time, my null hypothesis would be after how many generations we do that this P and Q should not change. Does that make sense? All right, so the null hypothesis is the hypothesis of no difference that if natural selection does not change gene frequencies, yes, then these will not change. Got that? So that's the null hypothesis that we're going to be working on. And if we do see a change in the gene frequency, something needed to change it. And we're testing to see if natural selection will test the change in gene frequency. Okay. So for our first generation, what I want you to do, since if you're heterozygous, you can either have all three different genotypes, correct? You can have big A, big A, big A, little A, and little A, little A bears, if you're heterozygous. If you have heterozygous bears mating, you have the possibility, 25% chance of having uh, homozygous dominant, 25% chance of having homozygous recessive, and 50% uh, chance of having heterozygous bears. We good? That makes sense to you? So what I want you to do is reach it, mix up your bears, mix up your bears, mix them up, mix them up, come on, mix them up. And then I want you to grab a handful, just a, you know, like a pinch. Now, depending on the people, I just throw bears at you, but just grab a handful, put them down, right? And what I want you to do, this is your, now the total number of bears are what you're going to count. Yep, you're going to mix all the sad and happy bears together. All right, mix them all together. Take out a, you're going to have a mix of happy and sad bears. And I want you to put them down, and I want you to add them to, this is a new population, this is generation number one, number one, and I want you to add all those bears together. Add them all up. their bears, they've already counted their bears. Just grab a handful, yeah, and then I want you to add them all together. Add all the, you know, the 15 plus this generation here. Okay. okay we're going to try to get through at least, you know, four generations, so don't grab too many. Don't like, put the box in. All right, so you're going to record this under generation number one. Happy bears, sad bears, right? So let's see, you know, you design your own table. I was going to design one, but you can do it yourself. Design your own table, have happy and sad. Okay. Now, this is where the natural selection comes into play. We are a bear-eating monster, right? You are. And you are going to eat happy bears because they're easy to catch because they run through the woods with their hands up. Right? Like a deer running with those big antlers. So I want you to take out seven happy bears from your population that you have and put those seven happy bears inside a bear morgue somewhere. Now, if you don't have seven happy bears, make up the difference with sad bears. So if you only have five happy, take out all the five happy and then take two sad bears. All right? We good? Take out the happy bears and put them in a morgue because you don't want to mix up dead bears. <clears throat> I said seven. Seven, yep. Okay, everybody have seven bears? 
ya.